Shalom and welcome to Jerusalem Studio. On November 2nd, Israel and the United Kingdom celebrated the centennial of the Balfour Declaration, in which the British Foreign Secretary at the time, Arthur Balfour, provided the leader of the Jewish community in the United Kingdom, Lord Rothschild, with a public statement of support to establish in the land of Palestine a national homeland for the Jewish people. To further discuss this, I'm joined here in the studio by Dr. Eran Lerman, who is the Vice President of the Jerusalem Institute for Strategic Studies and a lecturer at Shalem College. Welcome. Right. I'd like also to welcome our TV7 analyst, Mr. Amir Thank Oren, and Mr. Yoni Ben Menachem, who is a research fellow at the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs. Welcome. Right. Mr. Oren, of course, this is a point of celebration for the State of Israel. It marks the beginning of what uh, seemed to be the mark for the establishment of the State of Israel or the process of uh, this uh, endeavor. Nevertheless, we have also the Palestinians who mark it as a complete disaster. How are the, the sentiments to this uh, declaration at this specific time? History has made uh, for uh, an interesting um, coincidence. 1917, as you mentioned, and as we'll talk, the Balfour Declaration, only 30 years later, November 1947, the UN so-called partition resolution out of which Israel emanated. And 20 years later, the 1967 Six-Day War, which, at least uh, for the time being, has set the boundaries of the conflict. So we all go back to 1917, and we may see the uh, outline of what David Ben-Gurion, the first prime minister of Israel, uh, later called Perfidious Albion. Because if you look at the document, it doesn't say much. It is couched in very, very opaque terms. Sympathy, best endeavors. Uh, you can uh, hedge. You can say, well, we support, but if we can't succeed, so be it. Well, to that end, I'd like to read for our viewers the uh, letter that he was uh, that was sent to Lord Rothschild, which uh, uh, read, His Majesty's government view with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this object, it being clearly understood that nothing shall be done with uh, which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine on the rights and political status enjoyed by Jews in any other country. So if it was a college exam or a police interrogation, you would have been asked to define national home, define best endeavors. What do you mean by um, uh, regarding the uh, rights of the other uh, minorities, either communities, and so on and so forth. So this was deliberately open to interpretation and uh, was useful in the context of World War One. Dr. Lerman. I would take it a few steps further. Um, actually, there is clear language here speaking about the Jewish people. And in the language of the 19th and 20th century, peoplehood, is another way of saying nationhood. Nationhood ultimately links up with what came to be called the right of self-determination. Moreover, a national home. Uh, yes, this was not a declaration of independence or a promise of a state. Um, as we know, even the Zionist movement did not actually endorse the goal of a state, a commonwealth, until World War II and the Baltimore Conference in New York in 42. Nevertheless, it was a significant statement by the world power at the time. It, it, but it was very clear that this was an act of recognition of the Zionist movement mm. as a national movement of the Jewish people. Moreover, there is a clear distinction here between the rights of the Jews as a national project and the individual religious and, and, uh, and civil rights of the existing communities, which are not described in terms of a people. There is no Palestinian people, because at the time, there was no Palestinian people. This, it, I am not disputing that there is a Palestinian people now. It came into being as a response to the Zionist project. But it, there was nothing like this uh, in the minds of the British decision makers at the time. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ben Menachem? I think that uh, it is the first big achievement of the Zionist movement. And uh, the fact that we uh, got uh, a Zionist, such, such a recognition from uh, 
Britain is very important. And uh, from day one, the Palestinians didn't like it. They, they still call it the cursed uh, 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 Balfour uh, Declaration, the cursed El Mashum in Arabic, they call it, mm-hmm. uh, until today. So this uh, symbolizes the fact that uh, they don't want to accept Zionism mm-hmm. at all. They're against the Zionist movement until today. Even the Oslo Accords, where they supposedly uh, accepted the two-state solution and recognized uh, Israel and so on, is uh, contradicting to what happened there in uh, when the day of the uh, declaration, because there are not, there's no state of Israel without the Zionism. And the fact that they don't want to accept the Zionism, and for them this is a, a bad name for... Uh, a racist name, whatever, uh, indicates that uh, they're not fully ready to accept mm-hmm. the existence of the state of Israel. And this is very, very alarming. And uh, this conflict uh, is uh, 100 years old already, and it's, I think it's going to go for another 100 years <laughs> because they're not willing to accept it. And uh, this is a very bad sign. Well, hopefully you're mistaken to that end. But I Mr. Oren, when we're talking about uh, the unwillingness uh, to recognize this as uh, a positive endeavor, obviously the Palestinians recognized this as the basic document that uh, brought them so much suffering and challenges over the course of 100 years. Uh, just several months uh, ago, Sai Berika, the chief negotiator of the Palestinian uh, Liberation Organization, who is also a member of uh, different uh, parts of uh, the Palestinian leadership, came out and sent a formal uh, request to the British government demanding that they reject and condemn the Balfour Declaration, something that uh, uh, quite spectacularly by Prime Minister uh, Theresa May was vehemently rejected to the dot. Uh, how do you see this actually uh, challenge or confrontation between the British government and the Palestinian leadership? Well, this is the fashion of the times um, uh, to express regret. And then the next uh, step is to pay reparations uh, for um, uh, misdeeds uh, uh, which have been performed uh, long ago. But uh, Mr. Arikat uh, was wrong in his approach. The um, um, powers at the time were empires, the British Empire, the French Empire, the Russian Empire, the German Empire, the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Not all of them survived the war. And part of the British design in the Middle East was to entice the indigenous tribes and peoples to rise up against the Ottomans who ruled the area. And therefore, when they promised, and some of the promises were contradictory, when they promised local forces to help them after the war, it was conditional upon the help that they will get against uh, the Ottomans. And um, there were, as uh, Aaron Lerman just uh, remarked, there were no Palestinians. It was part of the southern Syria, part of the Ottoman Empire. There was no difference between the Arabs of the Transjordan or of uh, Syria, which included Lebanon and what we now call Palestine or or Israel. And therefore, one should also note that in the Balfour letter to Rothschild, there are three groups, Jews who will come to Palestine, Zionists, the local communities, and Jews who will remain in their countries of origin, namely in Europe, and uh, whose rights will not be hurt. Uh, this is uh, the, one of the promises. So it doesn't uh, seem as if uh, what the British had in mind was that all of the Jewish diaspora will convene within Palestine. Well, uh, Dr. Lehmann, you talked about uh, this specific promises that the British right. Empire provided to the uh, uh, Jews and to other uh, uh, denominations within the Middle East. Uh, please, could you elaborate yeah, on that? Just to say that I'm glad to see in the background some references to the celebration in Be'er Sheva, mm. which I attended. Uh, quite remarkable. And uh, yes, there was a Zionist contribution because the intelligence that enabled General Allenby to roll the Turkish flank with this famous uh, charge of the Australian light horse uh, originated uh, from Zionist activists, the Nili underground, uh, among others. But the question of contribution was definitely on the table. The British did manage to arrange for the uh, rebellion of the Hashemite house in 
the Hejaz, what is now West uh, Saudi Arabia, against the Ottomans. But it is very clear. Uh, my great late uh, professor, Eli Kaduri in London, studied this uh, uh, intensively. It's very clear that there was no contradiction between the promises made by MacMahon in Cairo to the Hashemite house, to the Sharif uh, of Mecca, Sharif Hussein of Mecca, and the later promise that was made to the Zionist movement. The Hashemites were acutely aware that everything west of the Vilayet of Damascus was excluded. Lebanon and the land of Israel, Palestine, were excluded from that promise. They even signed an agreement between the Hashemites and uh, Chaim Weizmann in 1919, mm -hmm. the Faisal Weizmann Agreement, which clearly is a delineation of projects between the Arab national movement and the Jewish national movement, including an amazing paragraph about close Jewish settlement in the land of Israel, approved and agreed to by the Hashemites. The story, however, is that the British did, per Fidius Albion, they did give a contradictory promise. They, what they promised the French under Sykes, -Picot, Sykes and Georges Picot, the famous agreement, mm -hmm. and what they promised uh, the Hashemites ended up being contradictory. And the French claimed what was their due. The British respected their promise to the French over their promise to the Arabs. If you go to a small village in France and you see the monuments, and how many were lost in every small village from 14 to 18, you know that the French had a claim on the outcome of World War I. And as a result, they were driven out of Damascus and this fell apart. Mm -hmm. And into that void came people like Haj Amin al-Husseini with a, what later became a Palestinian agenda, the sort of thing that we are seeing now, that all these protests against the Balfour Declaration. But it was not preordained. Mm -hmm. It could have been a different... But you had Lawrence of Arabia and Balfour of Judea. <laughs> you had two different Brits. Um, with uh, inter two yes, different... Uh, yes, yeah, with absolutely. other audiences. I think that we should uh, pay attention to what the Palestinians are trying to do now. Uh, as I would say, a brutal uh, diplomatic behavior. They uh, Not only did they demand uh, the British government to apologize for this uh, declaration, they also threatened to sue them in uh, the International Court in Hague. And uh, they're trying to blackmail the, the British government to recognize the Palestinian state, uh, so-called to comp compensate the Palestinians for this uh, Balfour Declaration. <laughs> And uh, I think this is a very brutal behavior because uh, uh, what uh, Balfour did at that time was was fine. This is, was the, the policy of Britain. Mm -hmm. And now they want to, to try to get the concessions from the British government concerning the uh, final status uh, of the conflict. And uh, we have to, to thank the British government that they don't uh, give, they don't uh, yield, they don't give up, and don't surrender to these Palestinian demands because this will be a catastrophe. And I think that uh, this uh, behavior of uh, Abu Mazen, uh, of Mahmoud Abbas, uh, shows how weak he is because uh, instead of going to the diplomatic way and try to settle the conflict, he's uh, trying to, to use the international arena and, uh, and threaten and, and, and sue well, obviously, to that end, I think that uh, Prime Minister Theresa May came publicly out in the yeah, banquet she, she, that she, uh, she uh, occurred in London. Yeah. And at the same time, even Boris Johnson, the Foreign Secretary of the United Kingdom right now, didn't even put it on the agenda. So I don't think that the United Kingdom is giving it the stage that the Palestinians would hope for. Yes. But w with one qualification. Please. Of course, it's a preposterous case that the Palestinians are putting forward. They are not the legitimate heirs of um, those Arabs who lived uh, in this area a hundred years ago. But nevertheless, there is a precedent, and Israel is responsible for it because Israel took upon itself uh, the mantle of the inheritor of the Jews who lived in Europe before the state of Israel was established when Israel uh, brought in and tried uh, war criminals, namely Adolf Eichmann, and also uh, received re reparations from Germany for Jews who, again, did not reside in its territory. So the uh, Palestinians are going to lose if they ever come to the uh, ICC. Mm -hmm. But Israel, Israel has made 
a weak case a bit stronger. Well, uh, Dr. Lerma, I'd like also to touch base on the uh, statement by Prime Minister Netanyahu in which he set the foundation for the Balfour Declaration or the unwillingness to recognize the Balfour Declaration by the Palestinian leadership as the key hurdle of being able to bring about a viable solution to the decades-old conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. Look, uh, it's not just Saeed Barakat. Uh, Abu Mazen himself had uh, published in The Guardian on the day of the centennial. An article. An article, which is, uh, again, a repetition of all the uh, lies and, and distortions about the history of the Balfour Declaration. It should be, uh, my colleague at Shalem, uh, Martin Kramer, Professor Martin Kramer, has done a remarkable job tracing the support of other international players for the Balfour Declaration, but the British government consulted with all its key allies, all the, the four, uh, it was a four-way Declaration. The British government gave it because they were about to uh, take Palestine into their own hands in battle. But the French, the Italians, and uh, the Wilson administration all were aware that this is going to be put forward and agreed. And of course, the culmination was the League of Nations mandate, which was again very clear uh, in support of the pro uh, proposal uh, embodied in the Balfour Declaration. The Palestinians are climbing on a sheer uh, uh, absurdity. And of course, the ICC <laughs> it, it has nothing to do with this, it has no jurisdiction over it. It just gives you a sense of how they clutch at straws. Mm -hmm. But it's not just me who made the point. Mm -hmm. We have to remember when the Prime Minister visited France earlier this year, it was Emmanuel Macron, yep. uh, not, uh, not the right of center, but the left of center leader of Europe, the savior of Europe from uh, radical populism, who said very clearly, anti-Zionism of this sort is a form of anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. And the Palestinians should reconsider. Mr. Ben Menachem. I think that uh, Mahmoud Abbas, President Mahmoud Abbas, is trying to justify his uh, failures, his political failures, and uh, the lack of the achievements in the 12 years that he's the president of the Palestinians. He didn't achieve anything uh, for them. Uh, uh, towards uh, recognizing the uh, independent Palestinian state. So I think now he knows that this is the end of the road for him. He's going to retire. Well, I soon. suppose being a non-member state in the United Nations is somewhat of these a are all, these successful are all, uh, endeavor. This is not something on the ground. This is all on paper. They need something on the ground, which we mm -hmm. didn't get. And uh, he did not succeed in achieving it. So he's trying now to put the blame on the Balfour Declaration 100 years ago. It's all the fault of Balfour and trying to to give reasons why he failed. Actually, mm -hmm. he should have done something and negotiate with Israel and get the achievements that they need, the political achievements, and not blame the past, what had happened in history and 100 years ago. This doesn't interest anyone. If I ask the people on the street, the Palestinians, they don't know what is Balfour Declaration. And they just know the slogan, this is the cursed Balfour Declaration. This is it, they don't know the mm -hmm. history, they don't know what is behind it. And they say Abu Mazen is a failure, and this is why he is doing it by putting the blame on the British 100 years ago. He should solve the problem, which he didn't. Mr. Owen? It, it's quite a leap of logic uh, from uh, 1917 to the present, uh, conveniently forgetting what happened uh, in between. Because if the British government made the commitment, it no, it's not a real commitment, uh, it's an indication of sympathy, but if it made a commitment and then became the mandatory power, then it could shift its uh, stance or calibrate it uh, uh, to, uh, according to its needs. There was the Arab revolt of 1936-39, which failed. The British tried to curtail Jewish immigration to Palestine. We know all of that. It happened in the 20s and 30s and 40s. And eventually, the British gave up on the mandate. The United Nations decided to partition Palestine, and the Arabs challenged this decision by force and lost. Mm -hmm. This is the starting point out of which the discussion should be held. Dr. Sh uh, Lerman, you're shaking your head in acquiescence. Uh, your response? Yes. The, you know, uh, for the Palestinians to ignore that they were actually offered a state um, by the United Nations, which they rejected, and to posit that, you know, uh, their current miserable situation uh, divided between two rival camps that have a fake agreement between them and so on and so forth, is all really, you know, the result of some colonial machinations a hundred years ago, mm. um, is part of a pattern of, of uh, as, as the other said, of, of rejecting responsibility. And I think the international community does the Palestinians no favor when it treats them 
again and again, as, as somewhat less than fully responsible adults. It's actually an insult. They call it the racism of reduced expectations. They should be treated as adults that should have come to terms with reality long ago. Mr. Ben I Martin. think uh, what Amir said is, uh, is quite true. The partition plan is, is the essence of the whole thing, not the Balfour uh, declaration. The Balfour Declaration was, uh, okay, a big uh, uh, recognizing the Israeli right for a national home and uh, the, the Jewish right for a national home and, uh, of course, a big victory for Zionism, but uh, there was an actually uh, a solution there, the partition of, of Palestine, what is called Palestine, in two, two states, and they refused it. And, uh, you know, even in the, uh, in the UN uh, uh, resolution, it says a Jewish state. And they, they, until today, they refused the word Jewish, even though it's in the, the, the UN resolution. This mm -hmm. is the term that they used, a Jewish state. So I think that they're not willing to accept uh, any Jewish presence here, any Zionist presence here. They want the whole cake. They're not willing to split the cake. And this is the problem, that they're not willing to share. They want the whole thing for themselves, and as long as they continue this policy, they will not get, get anything. They will lose everything. There, there's Mr. nothing, nothing um, intrinsically <coughs> wrong with having a legacy and um, uh, looking uh, at the past and, and uh, longing for a renewal of uh, some halcyon days. Um, the uh, Jews have done it for 2,000 years, and many, many cultures are based on it. But this is not a practical recipe mm -hmm. for, for advancing one's cause. And the Palestinians, uh, for some reason, are conveniently hiding behind the past. For instance, not only are the refugees themselves enjoying the status of a refugee, but even their grandchildren Grand and grand-grandchildren grand now <laughs> that we are almost mm -hmm. 70 years after the fact. And one, one should, Yoni ben Menachem uh, earlier suggested that we look 100 years from now when we meet again for, mm -hmm. yeah. for a review. We're, of we're going to be here, all of us. But, well, but, who knows? <laughs> but this, 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 Science is, is, all this is a, a, a more positive direction uh, the Palestinians, the Israelis, the other Arabs in the region, mm -hmm. and outside powers should try to advance the cause of peace from now on, rather than retrace mm -hmm. everyone's uh, footsteps and getting nowhere. Well, I'd like to touch base actually on another thing that happened uh, last week to date, uh, the uh, memorial for late Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, 22 if I'm not mistaken, uh, in which uh, an Israeli murdered uh, the Israeli Prime Minister uh, at the time because of bringing forward the Oslo Accords, which were, in his mind, the best way to bring about a viable solution between Israel and the Palestinians. Dr. Lerman, how do you perceive the current stage in which so many years later, those Oslo Accords are still a foundation for an authority that barely functions, but doesn't really uh, go to dot on the mandate that it was given through the Oslo Accords proper. Well, the failure of the Oslo process is the failure of, uh, I would say, the, uh, the Palestinian leadership to come to terms with the realities that we've been discussing. And I have a, a cause to believe that the worst thing, the, the most, the, that this vile man, Yigal Amir, did was to prevent the day of reckoning in which probably Tzhak Rabin himself would have had Regrets. To, uh, to actually uh, face up to the fact that he was dealing with Yasser Arafat's, um, let's say, double-faced, Mm -hmm. attitude towards terrorism, towards the process that he engaged in, towards um, the, the, the prospect of peace. We know about his speech in Johannesburg, but we, even more so, we know about his attitude towards the terrorists that Yitzhak Rabin asked uh, the Israeli defense establishment to go and discuss with him about. Which was Arafat's way of uh, basing just, everything on international appeasement. And he dismissed and all the attempts to bring these terrorists under control until it was much too late. In, in March 96, almost half a year after the assassination mm -hmm. and after the bombings in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem that, that threatened to and, and ultimately did bring down um, the labor government, uh, then finally Arafat did what he should have done 
back the moment he came in in 94. And it is it, this failure or undermined the Oslo process mm -hmm. right from the beginning. And it would have been much more effective and much more purposeful if Rabin himself would have been in a position. So this actually to, brings to the base, and this is something that I want to understand, does this analogy of the unwillingness to recognize the Balfour Declaration go hand in hand with uh, failure or incomplete ability to bring about the Oslo Accords? Well, it, it's not really identical. Um, I think I, I uh, can uh, say on behalf of the three of us, we all knew Rabin uh, to a certain degree Iran is an intelligence analyst, and Yoni and myself as journalists covering Rabin himself and the peace process. He was very skeptical, very suspicious. He never believed that Arafat was sincere. He would always hedge, and had he seen Arafat behave the way he did after his assassination, which is, of course, impossible, he would have gone back, or at least not gone forward to the Oslo B stage. But had Rabin, had the fortune to have a Mahmoud Abbas at the time, rather than Arafat as a partner, perhaps things could have uh, been better. Mr. Ben Menachem? I think uh, Mahmoud Abbas is more dangerous than Arafat. Hmm. Uh, I think he's more cunning than Arafat. Uh, Arafat was very impulsive. He would used to express immediately what he thinks. Uh, he used to plan secretly, but uh, I think Mahmoud Abbas is a lot more sophisticated. I know them both personally. Uh, so I don't get I don't uh, get this image of the old man with the white hair as a grandfather who just want to go to a chief peace. I don't accept this uh, uh, description. Uh, I think that uh, what we see until today is the same policy uh, that if uh, Prime Minister Rabin was alive, of course, I agree with Amir would reject it or even cancel. If he can, could cancel the Oslo agreement, he would have done that because if he was alive. <laughs> Uh, it was a five-year agreement. Yeah. Mm. Well, unfortunately, but, uh, we're we're drawing near to the end of the program, okay, so I'd like sentence. a closing statement from you. The, the double-faced policy of Arafat, uh, uh, having peace, negotiation of peace with Israelis and encouraging terrorism at the same time is what the Hamas is right, trying to do now with re, the reconciliation to have some sort of a political... Uh, 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 initiative, initiative in, the, in, the, in the future, but at the same time to keep the military power in order to make terror attacks to uh, put pressure on Israel. So this is the same policy. Dr. I would Lohmann. say very quickly that we've become much more sophisticated than in the past in conflict management. Mm -hmm. And I think that in the gray area of conflict management, Abbas is a better partner than Arafat for one reason. He understood the utter futility of organized violence. Let, this let is the a, this in itself is not a bad thing. Mr. Owen. Let the Palestinians uh, speak for themselves. What the Israelis need is not a new Balfour, but a new Ben-Gurion. <laughs> well, this is all the time that we have for today, so I'd like to thank Dr. Lehrman, Mr. Oren, and Mr. Ben Menachem for thank coming you. here today, and I'd like to thank our viewers as well, and we will see you next time. TV7 Israel's mission is to give you, our viewers, truthful information, which in effect will give you a chance to really understand what is happening in Israel and its region. If you are blessed by our programs and believe our mission to be important, we urge you to support us and become a voice for Israel. You can support us by going to our website at tv7israelnews.com. This program was made possible through your donations.